In this video, I'm going to talk about retrofitting classic loudspeakers to be both wireless and mobile. I had fun while researching the various components and putting this together. But while there are some trade-offs, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. So my goal was to have classic sound and modern convenience. No more wires and having speakers that would be easy to move. I have a lot of furniture that's already on wheels and it's great being able to just rearrange my living room for movie nights or entertaining or just enjoying the fireplace. Sometimes I want the speakers at the front of the room. Sometimes I might want them at the back. One of my regular VIPs likes the new look. Honestly, I think he just likes the fireplace. Okay, let's talk trade-offs. Firstly, this is not a budget project. You have to buy two of everything. With the wireless, is there quality issues? Is there lag? What is battery performance like? How well did these small amplifiers perform? And finally, while I am modernizing these somewhat, they're not exactly smart speakers. When it comes to wireless tech, I'm basically looking for the holy grail. I want hi-fi, low latency, CD quality, good range, one transmitter to multiple receivers, and the ability to use an external power supply. After researching lots of options, this product basically checks all the boxes. It uses 2.4 gigahertz wireless instead of Bluetooth, and so it can get a 30 millisecond latency, which is pretty good. I've also had pretty good experience with the range and battery life so far. The company also says they have a 10 millisecond version coming out in 2023. I was curious as to what's inside this transmitter and how they might be digitizing the audio, so I took a look. My best guess is that this one chip is responsible for the wireless. A second chip is responsible for the SPDIF DAC. This is the TV style audio input that goes from digital to analog. This last chip is interesting because apparently it is a one watt headphone driver and this is on a transmitter unit. So my theory is that the 24 bit ADC on this chip is responsible for taking the line input and converting it to digital. Whatever it is, it sounds pretty good. Okay, time to go shopping for inexpensive amplifiers on Amazon. I chose this knob sound amp for my project. Now they claim 100 watts at 4 ohms, but I say, eh, let's say it's 50 or maybe even 25 when it comes down to 8 ohms. Numbers aside, these do really sound good in my place. They fill the room with sound with no problem. My understanding is that the Texas Instruments chipset they use is also quite common. There's also a kit version available, just the board, and you can save a few dollars that way. Here's another kit style amp that I didn't go with. Uh, but this one has Bluetooth stereo and it can do 50 watts. They also have a 100 watt version available. It costs a bit less, but I've seen in the reviews that because of the Bluetooth, it makes a chime every time you turn it on. The Bluetooth might be running even when the power is turned off. And so for this project, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, let's talk about power supplies. I feel like what I ultimately chose here was overkill for this project because these batteries ran for a month before I had to recharge them. I was quite impressed. I haven't been able to actually measure the current taken by the amplifier, but my guess is that they really don't take much power. What's impressive about this battery is that it has a very stable 12 volt nominal output throughout its life cycle. It is the pricier of the two options I looked at though, so consider the next one as well. Second model I looked at was also from Talent Cell, 12 volts and 5 volts via USB, 3000 milliamp hours, and the output ranges between 12.6 and 9 volts on this model, so you do get more of a natural decline in voltage, but you have a good price advantage here. I found these plant caddies, and basically just with a little bit of padding, they fit nicely underneath the speaker. And as long as there's room for the wheels to spin around, you're good to go. Okay, finally, the nitty gritty. Connecting things together, some of the side effects I ran into 
and how I fix them. So here we have the 12 volt power supply, the wireless receiver, and the amplifier. The first thing we do is we'll connect the wireless receiver to the amplifier. So there's your audio. We then connect the 12 volt power supply to the amplifier. Then we connect the speaker to the amplifier using some cables with banana plugs. The wireless units can be charged and powered via USB-C. That sounds great, so I plug it in. And that's when I realize I've found my first problem. Not sure if you can hear it, but there's some sort of a terrible squealing sound and hiss. And my guess is this is some sort of ground loop or interference or noise being introduced by the fact that these two units are connected to the same power source. As a workaround, I tried adding an audio ground loop isolator, and this effectively breaks the electrical connection that I suspect is causing this noise. And there's just one more cable left to add, that is a stereo to mono splitter. Each speaker needs to take one channel for itself. So there are a fair number of cables, and it's not the prettiest looking thing in the world, and I could probably get better cables and cable management. But you know what? It looks all right, and it works pretty well. That pretty much wraps it up. I, I've i had fun with this. I hope you find it interesting as well. Again, you know, this isn't a budget project. It's not perfect, but I had a lot of fun researching and putting all this stuff together. And I'm just really happy to have less wires cluttering up my living room and more things on wheels. I just think it's great. Do you wanna uh, go for a walk? Oh yeah. <laughs>